Okay, everybody, welcome back to the first fully documented P1 Auto to M66 transmission conversion on ImportSauce.com. Today, we are gonna be talking about the parts. If you are just tuning in, you need to go back to our overview, go back to our cost video, and see what we've done prior to this. This time, we're talking each and every part for your M66 transmission conversion. Stick around. Okay, so first of all, I want to give a big shout out to IPD USA, IPDUSA.com, because that is who we are going to use for these parts. As mentioned before, Certain parts we're gonna buy new, certain parts we're gonna rebuild, certain parts we're gonna put in as is. We're going through IPDUSA.com because as you all know, if you have a Volvo, you go down to AutoZone, you go down to O'Reilly's, those jokers don't have anything. They might have your brake pads, they might have your oil filter, but if you need anything else, you know that they say, uh, we can't get it, or hey, we can get it, it's gonna be two weeks to get it in. So IPDUSA.com is who we are using for everything. So this segment, we are gonna talk about parts. I'm gonna go through the whole M66 swap and tell you what we're doing so you have a better idea of what you should be doing. Let's start off with the clutch. We talked about the clutch in terms of the price video. We already know the clutch, the flywheel, the pressure plate, you're not gonna put used stuff in your car. As we mentioned before, you're not using used brake pads, and I am not going to put your used underwear on me. Clutch, it's a no-brainer. You're not going to put a used one in. Flywheel and the pressure plate, same thing. The clutch kit, easy enough. You're going to purchase that new IPD. You can buy the original P1 S40 V50 version. In our situation, we are going to upgrade to the S60R clutch because of the single mass flywheel. The price point is about the same, 370 for the S40, 390 for the S60. So you're going to get that. The flywheel is the wild card. Volvo sells it for $1,100. We are going to upgrade in terms of performance and go with the single mass flywheel from Viva Performance. Comes in at about 570 tax shipping but it's like seven pounds lighter. So you're gonna get performance right off the bat. You're gonna have a little bit of the chatter on the idle. We've all seen that on Sweet Speed and other forums. And that's the reason why we're gonna go with the S60R clutch. And the price is about the same. This is just because, hey, if we're gonna spend the money 570 on a flywheel, we might as well get something that's lighter, more responsive. Those are the first things. Those are non-negotiable. You're not putting a used clutch you're not putting a used flywheel, you're not putting a used uh, pressure plate. So, just that's that. Next, the M66. As we know, these are essentially bulletproof, which means, I mean, we've seen these on the forums, they get up to 200,000, 300, 400,000 miles. If you need a new one, you can get one from uh, LKQ online with like 70, 80,000 miles for six or 700 bucks. We're not going to Volvo, we're not gonna buy this brand new with zero miles for $4,500, it's just simply out of the question. But with the M66, there are certain things that we're gonna to do to it before it goes in. Obviously, crush washers. We have our fill plug, we have our drain plug. We have a crush washer on both. If you were to get new plugs on both, new crush washers on both, you're talking 10 bucks, come on. The reverse sensor on there is $14. And you're thinking, well, how often does the reverse sensor go out? It probably doesn't, but the transmission is out of the car. Why would you not spend $14 to put a new reverse sensor onto the transmission? When you buy the clutch kit, you're going to have our new slave cylinder that's going to come with it. So that's fine. You're already in there. One of the biggest failures is going to be our clutch vent pipe. This is what brings our clutch fluid in through the outside and feeds it into your slave cylinder. These are notorious for going bad, and if they do go bad, you have to rip the whole transmission off to simply replace this plastic line. It's $40, again, not an option. Buy a new one, put it in, it's already off and accessible. 
Uh, other things on the transmission, you're gonna wanna do your axle seals. These things run anywhere from six to $18. You wanna make sure that the fluid is gonna stay in there. Again, it's already off. Pop the old one, put the new one in. Other than that, keep in mind, you have to fill this up with fluid. And we talked about that in our price video. Make sure that you've bought it for or have your fluid on hand. Maybe an extra quart in case you spill, you overflow, whatever it is. The last thing you want to be is half quart short and having to drive to Volvo or your parts store before you can fire up. That's the transmission. The next thing is the pedal assembly. Obviously, if you're running auto, you have two pedals. If you're going to be running a manual, you're going to need three pedals. The pedal assembly is the same but different. And what I mean is it's different in the fact that an auto is going to have two pedals, gas and brake. A manual is going to have three pedals, gas, brake, clutch. But they are the same in the fact that for every year, 2005 to 2010, the last year that they made the M66 on these, is going to be the same in terms of auto pedals are the same all the way through. Manual pedals are the same all the way through. So these are easily found at a junkyard or through your donor. The reason that your gas and your brake pedal are different is the brake pedal is smaller. We all know that on auto, we have a larger pedal because you have the room, why not? Um, in terms of the manual, you have the third pedal, which is why our brake pedal is half the size so that you can fit those on there. The pedal assemblies, we did not do anything with them. These are metal and plastic brackets. We've never seen any form chatter that they've gone bad. So we're gonna use the originals that we sourced from our donor. And we've also cross-referenced the parts instead of the, the brake light sensor and everything else is identical. So just make sure you get your pedal assembly from the M66 or M56 if you're non-turbo and you're good to go. We're gonna talk about it later, but there are opportunities for upgrades and this is one we did with the R design pedals so that we have the aluminum pedals that will match the interior of the vehicle. Aside from this, we're gonna talk about this as install. These are extremely difficult, probably the most difficult thing on the swap to install because these brackets are so far up under the dashboard behind the steering column. But for this video of parts, these are pretty much just grab and go either from your donor or from your local junk car. One thing that is semi-related to the clutch pedal, or I guess maybe fully related, is going to be your master cylinder, right? So if you're running an auto, you don't have a master cylinder because you do not have to pump anything because you don't have a clutch. The master cylinder is actually housed inside of the clutch pedal, obviously, because when you depress, it's going to pump the pressure through. This is one part you absolutely should not reuse. These things are cheap enough. IPD, they have three options. They have two aftermarkets and the Volvo Original. They range from $60 to $90 to the Volvo original $230. We went ahead and uh, ended middle of the road, but it's out, it's coming out. The last thing you wanna do, the hardest part of the install, the clutch pedal, because of the bracket, is use an old cylinder. Get a new one, put it in, and that's going to complete your system there. We just talked about the clutch pedal and the master cylinder. We now have fluid that has to operate our clutch. Where does this fluid come from? It comes from the master brake booster cylinder. It goes down to the transmission and it is controlled by your clutch pedal. So off of the cylinder, we have our clutch pipe and we have our brake clutch pipe. These two pipes are gonna come off of and link in to feed brake fluid into here and then pump it all the way back out down to your transmission. It's gonna open up your slave cylinder there. So these two parts we pulled from a donor and they're plastic, they're hard ones, they're metal, they're rubber. Upon inspection, they look like they're gonna be okay. We're gonna reuse these, but what we're not gonna reuse is the O-rings inside of them. Um, IPDUSA.com does have the O-rings that will fit right in here for like $2. So we have those in our cart, we're gonna have those coming. We're gonna make sure that the seals on here are nice and solid so that we don't have any air leaks and that we're pumping adequate pressure through. Aside from that, 
a question that we had was, well, our master brake reservoir, how is that going to connect? Is this a different part number than the auto? Is it the same part number than the auto? We have to feed the clutch from that. And upon research, they're identical part numbers. We can't see it. And if you have an auto, you can't see it. This is tucked down behind the battery box behind a plastic firewall brake. But what happens is on auto, we are going to have this capped off. So we saved this one from the donor, but we are almost 99% sure when we get in there that there's simply going to be a cap that we remove and then are able to hook our hose into. The next thing we're going to talk about is the shift linkage and the shift cable assembly. So this isn't that bad to pull off. We had already pulled one out at the junkyard before we did our parts research. We got the version off the M56, so the 2.4 non-turbo, and obviously we needed the M66 version, the six speed, not the five speed. We weren't thinking when we spent two hours at the junkyard, ripping this thing out, fishing it through the firewall, but all in all, the second time we had to do it, it wasn't that bad. In terms of this, there isn't really anything that we're gonna replace. We're gonna clean up the uh, assembly here, the cables, they sell them new, but they're a couple hundred dollars. And as long as there was proper tension on these, you don't see where, why are you gonna replace them? In terms of the ends, you can see that there are cables and there are uh, different uh, lockers. And we have uh, definitely zip tied those on so that we don't lose those. But these are gonna just snap right on to our shifter there. And the rest of the assembly is good to go. What we are going to replace here is, why not, is going to be the shift boot and the shift knob. This is because, A, the shift knobs, if you have to buy one brand new, it's going to be like $40 from mobile. Why not buy a cool aftermarket Euro one? And the shift boot, you can use it, but again, you already have it out. Why not put something cool in, something black leather, or something to accent your car? So, in terms of the shifter, the boot, the knob, the cables, the linkage assembly, essentially, as it comes out, is how we're gonna put it back in. Nothing to do here. Okay, so now let's talk about the axles. The axles are one of the, uh, the parts that are very, very unique on these vehicles. So we have five different uh, drivetrains, right? So we have the 2.4, we have the 2.4 auto, the 2.4 manual M56, and then when we get to the T5, we have the T5 all-wheel drive, we have the T5 front-wheel drive, and then we have that in both manual and auto variations. And what we notice from our parts research is every single axle left and right is completely different. You cannot get these from your car. You have to get these axles from the exact same donor that you're going to be using. For example, we are T5 all-wheel drive auto. Our axles have to come from a T5 all-wheel drive manual. We couldn't get them from a 2.4. We couldn't get them from a front-wheel drive because the way that the M66 is set up for the all-wheel drive is that I'm guessing there's gonna be a different length on both sides because all-wheel drive, we have our angle gear, which is gonna send uh, the rear uh, pumpkin, through the drive shaft of power, which is going to shorten the axle, or if you're front wheel drive, the axle will be longer. So, we've seen the, the chatter on the forums. These axles, it is better to rebuild the original Volvo axles. If you were to go buy these brand new, you're gonna be at six, $700 each from Volvo, but essentially the only thing that's gonna go on in here is gonna be the internals. So if you pull these boots off, you put some new grease, you put some new clamps on them, and you go to those kits from IPDUSA.com, you're gonna get everything you need in one bag and you're gonna be able to rebuild these. And uh, the further form chatter is that the aftermarkets either A, don't fit, or B, they're not as strong. So why would you A, buy a six or $700 new one from Bubble, or B, buy a cheaper aftermarket when you can build and get the kit for 20 to 30 dollars and have these things essentially brand new if you're buying a kit make sure you check to see if it comes with a new axle bolt so Volvo recommends that every time you pull this axle you put a new bolt on there 
If the kit that's being provided does not come with it, make sure you buy one. The genuine Volvo ones from IPDUSA.com are only a couple dollars. So make sure you get those because the last thing you want is for your axle bolt to snap or, or something else weird like that. It's a couple bucks, make sure you upgrade. Okay, so the last thing we wanna talk about in terms of parts is going to be the mounts, right? So your transmission obviously is going to mount right up to your engine, but it is gonna to have to mount to your chassis. That's gonna be the upper transmission mount that's back here, by way up here. We have the lower mount that mounts, it's gonna be the torque gear, uh, angle gear if you are a uh, all-wheel drive, and then the torque gear, which is gonna be on the bottom. So these are all off. And while you can reuse them, or you can just use what's there, you can purchase factory optional upgrades. What we're gonna do here is we're actually going through PowerFlex USA. We're gonna be getting all of their poly bushings to replace all of these, right? So if you're swapping this thing in, it's additional weight or it's different weight than what your car is used to. And you're expecting to put that power down to the road. The last thing you want is to have a bad bushing or a bad mount. You get it in, why is my car now rattling? Why is, you know, I'm getting wheel hot? Whatever it may be. For the extra 20 to $60, swap everything out. These things are already off. The easiest time to do your bushings is when it's sitting right here on your garage floor, not when it's underneath and you're having to crawl under. So those are, again, uh, optional upgrades or optional parts that you can do. But again, it's out. Why not just have them here, swap them, and you know that your brand new M66 conversion is just gonna sit in there, it's gonna hold tight, and all of that new gear ratio is gonna go straight down to your tires. Okay, everybody, that was the parts segment. So we did a quick overview on all the different parts that are gonna go into it, what we're looking at replacing, what we're using, Go ahead and again, if you have not subscribed because we have way more coming in terms of this uh, playlist or the segment that we're going to be putting up, the article is growing by the day. So uh, subscribe and then again, uh, socials, import sauce, and then hop over to the website, importsauce.com. Thanks.